Joining me now to talk about the broader implications of the Chauvin verdict is Dr. Rashan Ray. He's a sociology professor and a Brookings Institution fellow. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Ray. Thank you for having me. So a release of emotion from around the country and perhaps even around the world. Also for George Floyd's family, his family members, they have, you know, really taken this with a sigh of relief. They're happy, but they say their work needs to continue. What do you think this emotional outpouring and celebration reveal about expectations of justice in America? Well, I think the first big thing is that even in a case where it's clearly a slam dunk, everyone saw the ball go into the net. But what people didn't know is when they looked at the scoreboard is whether or not the points were going to count. And that speaks to the role of racism in America, that it took a ample video evidence. It took a slew of officers and medical professionals coming out against Chauvin. It took a racially diverse jury to create more equity. And it took an all-star prosecution team to convict someone in what was clearly a slam dunk. I think it speaks to how difficult it is to convict police officers. Chauvin makes up less than 10 convicted of murder in the last 15 years, despite police killing over 1,000 people every year. Now, we've seen the celebrations out there, but beyond those very understandable reactions, does the guilty verdict actually move the needle at all when it comes to police accountability, particularly in black and brown communities? Well, I don't think that the guilty verdict in and of itself does. It's very clear that George Floyd's murder has galvanized people and has led to policy change in implementation, hence the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. But of course, what happens in the courts in the United States is there is an over-individualization process that happens, and there is a lack of focus on the system. And one thing we know is that Derek Chauvin was a bad apple that was allowed to proliferate in a rotten tree. And that's part of what people want to see have changes made, that people want policy changes. They not only want to see individual officers held accountable, they want to see the entire system of policing and the criminal justice system held accountable. So let's go ahead and talk about reform. Shortly after the Chauvin verdict in Ohio, an officer fatally shot a black teenage girl. We don't have all the facts yet, let me note that, but what specific reforms do you believe are necessary to avoid repeatedly returning to this place? I even heard Floyd's family earlier today say, we don't wanna continue having to see someone die as a result of this. So I wrote in a Brookings article today that as the sentence was coming down and people were cheering in the street, a 15 or 16 year old girl in Cleveland, Ohio was shot dead by the police. And it seems like the more things change, the more they stay the same. Look, what needs to happen first? Qualified immunity needs to be pulled off the books. This is a court doctrine that prevents police officers from facing civil and financial liability. It then has transference to criminal court in ways that it should not be interpreted as so. Second, we need to create police department insurance policies and individual officer liability insurance. If we had that, I guarantee you that Derek Chauvin, when he probably hit his fifth or sixth misconduct complaint, not the nearly 20 that he had, that he probably would have been viewed as uninsurable. So there are some definitely some changes we can make. And look, that $27 million that went to George Floyd's family is just a drop in the bucket of the billions of dollars spent on misconduct for police in the United States. That money comes from taxpayers. We need to shift the responsibility to law enforcement. Millions of people have seen the protests over the past year. What next steps do you believe are necessary to channel all of that frustration and anger into policy outcomes that actually make communities safer? Well, the big thing is that the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act needs to be voted on by the Senate. What people need to do, they should email, they should call, they should write to their senators to get that bill uh, a hearing to, to hopefully come up for a vote. And I think that's the most transformative piece of legislation that we've seen. In addition to appealing, uh, repealing qualified immunity, the other thing that it does is important. It creates national databases and national standards for use of force for police killings and bad apples. So that officers like Chauvin or even Timothy Moment, who killed 12-year-old Tamir Rice in a park in Cleveland, Ohio, cannot go work at another department and do the same sort of victimization that they did previously. Thank you so much for sharing all this insight with us. Brookings Institution Fellow Rayshon Ray. Take care.